start taking a look at your projects from a new perspective. With Code C, you understand the ins and outs of your code base from a bird's eye view, making it easier to work on larger projects. So what is Code C? Code C is a tool that can take a GitHub repository, visualize it into a code map and link up all the files that connect together. And what I mean by that is Code C will show you lines of which files depend on each other. Code C automatically creates a map of your code and highlights the connections between your services, directories and files. Every time you make a change to your GitHub repository, the code map will automatically update. Let's take a dive into their platform and I'll show you how to set up a new code map. I'll be using my website as an example and I will go through how you can get set up and get started with your first code map and show you how it can benefit you and your team. The first thing you want to do is actually log in. So at the top here, log in or create an account by clicking try for free to create a new account. You can sign in with Google or GitHub or even just create a standalone uh, login for this page. So just click try free and get started. So once you have actually logged in and you're all set, uh, you've set up your workspace, you'll be brought to this page, which is the Code C guide. Um, they have a bunch of different guides that can help you get set up really quickly. Um, it's actually super useful. You've got the standard quick start guide, which shows you how to create each different types of maps. Um, here, you can see you've got the review maps, you've got a code base map and the automations, which allow you to call triggers. Um, if we go back to the guide, you can see we've got onboarding. So this would be the cool one to use if you want to set up your map to help new uh, uh, members of your project get into the actual um, code, um, into your code base and get them up to speed quickly. And then there's other guides as well on here that you can have a look at for refactoring and shipping your code faster. Um, it's super useful and it's really cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to code base maps. So over in code base maps, you can see we can actually create our own. Before we do, I just want to show you there's a few um, example ones here we can actually have a look at. Let's go into the meditate app and have a look at this. So as you can see, we are now in here and you can actually see a bunch of different things here. You've got a map legend, which actually tags you can tag things um depending on this tile whatever you want however you want to tag it another thing they have which is nice to look at is actual tour so you can see here they have a brief overview tour now we hit start tour it's going to start taking you through step by step each file which um you set up tour you can actually set up each step in your tour yourself with a little note and what file should be looking at so you can see here this is just an example but we've got an overview of the app we click next it takes us to the next one contribute guidelines for contributors um, we go to next source code for the app resides here um, refer to the legend to gain more insights the main files look at the comp are the components uh, at are the components style and main logic so you can see all the different things here all the assets uh, for the app lie in the public directory so you can see here how a tour could actually walk a new member through. So when you're onboarding a new person, they'd be like, oh, okay, so that's this, this is that. Oh, cool, that's really nice. And this is really cool. And this is just a small project. If we were to go into a much larger one, you could set up a nice longer tour. Okay, so that's all cool. So we can have a look at someone else's code base, but how do we make our own? Well, up here, we can actually hit create and you can see it comes in to select your code base. Now, when you first set up your workspace, you would have to connect your GitHub account um, and your repository. Now, if you don't have any repositories here or a GitHub account, you can either add a new account or you can actually find more repositories. If we add more repositories here, you have to be logged into um, GitHub to see this. You can hit configure at the top right here, scroll down, and you can actually select all the repositories you want to be visible or use inside of Code C. You can actually select all repositories too, if you did not mind doing that. I've just selected my personal website because that's what we're going to be using today. Let's close this. And come back so you can see here i can just hit continue and this is going to set up a code map for my project now my project isn't huge um so it'll be quite easy and nice for us to go through now this is the map view we get here and you can see there's three different modes here we've got edit which is how you can edit the layout change things we have view mode which is just a way for people to actually have a look have a look this way you'll see your code tours and stuff like that 
and we can also go to playground which is where you want to go when you want to test out things and have a look but you don't want to actually affect the view so if you're just messing around and taking a look this is the place you want to be so let's go to edit mode and let's set up a project here let's just drop this down um, here and as you can see you can see these lines going to each file now this is just telling you that main.js depends on these files so you can see it depends on app.view um, some files inside the assets folder and if we go in it shows you which specific file it's linked to um, we can move this and obviously a file inside the router as well you can see it index and if we drop down fuse you can see this actually linked to multiple things inside of the fuse folder as well so that is really cool here so let's just close this legend on the side and this and let me just get this laid out so we can actually zoom in and out by holding control and using the mouse wheel or going down the bottom left to actually move around you can actually pan around like this so you can use the pan you've also got the select tool which means you'll select things you click on unless you click on the background and drag and that way you'll also be panning as well so you can see here we have a bunch of different files now we don't actually need to show this so we can actually hide specific files we don't need people seeing for example the package lock probably want to keep the package JSON out there and you can see there you go you can hide specific files just hide this one it's not necessary and there you go you can see all of these here how we can show these we can also lay this out in a better way for make to make it easier for people to when they're going through this to actually see so we bring this all out here we don't need this dot gear as well we can actually just hide that one as well and there you go you can see this is looking all right um, but let's set this out so it's nice and easy to read so we're going to set main over here we'll put app at the top uh, actually we'll put assets at the bottom yeah roots here and we'll keep it open so you can see each file uh, utilities can come up here and we'll just drop that down so you can see what's going on there move the whole thing um, and yeah you can just lay this out however you want whatever works best for you i don't think we need to uh, drop down the images of that this components i used to use it but i don't anymore i may use it in the future so i don't want to delete it from my repository all it has is a project card in there but i've removed the project section from my website uh, but look we can just hide that component and there we go that's now hidden and finally we can drop down the fuse here and you can now kind of see there's a nice easy flow of what's going on here so main.js requires app.view it the router and also the css file and in these files the index actually has dependencies here you can see the utilities depends on the router view um, and the index.js depends on all of these files over here um, all of the views all the things i've got other pages here we don't need to see so we can just right click and hide each one of these and there you go so you can see we've got a nice little few here. So if we switch to few mode you'll see that that's actually how it's laid out and how people will be able to see your project they won't be able to move it in few mode or open folders that you haven't opened in edit mode um, so you can actually let allow people to see specific things a lot easier if you only want to see certain things you can do that now there's other things we can do in here so obviously in that uh, demo i showed you you can actually add a tour now we can go down here and actually create a tour if we want to add tour and you can set a tour throughout this whole project you can add comments or notes to different files so you can see if i click on main we can say the entry point file file within our source um, obviously you may need to move things when you start adding text to it um, and we can actually um, add labels and other things to this as well so at the top right here you can see we close this sidebar you can see we have this sort of thing and if you select different ones you'll see colors start changing on the page now this first one here is actually lines or sorry the second one in is the lines of code you can see this actually shows you how many lines of codes are in each different file so you can see here these ones actually have a lot whereas blue files are less have less uh lines of code in um and you can see where most of the work is actually held most of the functionality is actually done like this we can go in here for the creation dates you can see where uh, different files are created you're going to see most of these are going to be more than a year ago because i haven't updated my website in a long time um yeah these are they're all going to be pretty a pretty long time ago um and there you go but if we go to last so what this one they were created so if we go to latest activity this would also show you which files i edited last um and what i did again i edited this a long time ago a lot of these files you could see oh you can see this was created five months ago but i believe that comes in with the last year um and not the last month which obviously 
doesn't give you much thing but these will be highlighted different colors depending on the actual time frame of when they were last active you can also see here the commit so this will show you different commits to different things on when they were last committed so again last commit three months ago so you can see they're not very hot spots right now because they actually haven't had many commits recently and if we go back to this first one you now can create labels now labels will allow you to highlight different things so let's say here we're going to say uh main functionality uh you can have another one called styling uh and there we go so if we go to main.css we can actually add a tag here or a label called styling we can also change the color of this so we can say styling is pink and main functionality is green and let's say we just go here we'll say okay router has main functionality here um fuse this you could just label things up how you see them labeling up and you can see the colors change here as well um giving you a really nice and easy view of the project now you can add as many labels as you want here to actually help you organize your project as well on the left here as well i just want to note that you can actually see everything inside of here as well in a list view and if you click on different ones you can just see it highlights which one you click on in the right here we select main you can see it highlights on main also, so as well as adding notes to different files, you can actually see them. You can actually add comments to it. So you could be like, okay, let's have a look at app.view and be like, uh, there's a bug. There's a bug, for example, dot, dot, dot. You would put in your thing there. And you can see there's a comment here. And then someone can say, fix the bug. Um, and you can actually have a comment on each file so you can have a history of comments showing you what's been changed who's changed it why they've put the comment there um, as well obviously you used a comment inside of code but you can also be in here like this was a temporary fix uh, we all know this one off very well uh, so you can see here this was, a, this was a temporary fix for example and you can see how much you can actually use this in a team to help each other understand the project really well Okay, guys, so don't forget to head down below in the comment section, or sorry, in the description down below and in the comment section to find a link to the actual Codesy website, um, and you can actually get started for free. I suggest to you that you actually go dive into this yourself and actually have a look. It's really awesome, and it has so many more features that I can't cover in one video. Uh, this is pretty awesome. It's a great tool, especially for teams and people who are taking on large projects to actually help them understand the project more and even if you're coming back to a project after a few after like a long period of time but this would be an awesome tool to help you get back into the flow of things it's super awesome and i really recommend using it so that's going to be it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below of what you think about code c and how it could help and benefit your team so i'm gonna leave this here don't forget to check out the links in the description and i will see you in the next one peace out